Welcome to your 10 minute flow state talk break. Today, I want to share some ideas from the book Mastery by Robert Greene. In the book, he shares that we all have access to mastery and what some call genius. What stops us is whether we lean into our strengths, our inner calling, or not. As a classic example, compare the lives of Sir Francis Galton and his older cousin Charles Darwin. By all accounts, Galton was a super genius with an exceptionally high IQ, quite a bit higher than Darwin's. Darwin, by contrast, is rightly celebrated as the superior scientist, one of the few who has ever changed our view of life. As Darwin himself admitted, he was a very ordinary boy, rather below the common standard in intellect. I have no great quickness of apprehension. My power to follow a long and purely abstract train of thought is very limited. Darwin, however, must have possessed something that Galton lacked. According to Robert Greene, Charles Darwin's success was due to his ability to follow his inner voice and natural desires. Early in his career, Darwin's father urged him to study medicine, but Darwin did not take to the subject. Eventually, his father pushed him into a career in church, concerned that he would not amount to anything. However, when Darwin learned of a ship leaving for South America that needed a biologist, he seized the opportunity. Suddenly, his passion for collecting found its perfect outlet. In South America, he would collect the most astounding array of specimens, as well as fossils and bones. He could connect his interest in the variety of life on the planet with something larger major questions about the origins of species. He poured all of his energy into this. The rest was history, as they say. Darwin's work gave birth to his theory of evolution, which is the basis for much of our understanding of life today. But Darwin's story is not unique. The basic elements of this story are repeated in the lives of all the great masters. A youthful passion or predilection, a chance encounter that allows them to discover how to apply it, an apprenticeship in which they come alive with energy and focus. And at the core of this intensity of effort is in fact a quality that is genetic and inborn, not talent or brilliance, which is something that must be developed, but rather a deep and powerful inclination toward a particular subject. This inclination is a reflection of a person's uniqueness. This uniqueness is not something merely poetic or philosophical. It is a scientific fact that genetically, every one of us is unique. Our exact genetic makeup has never happened before and will never be repeated. This uniqueness is revealed to us through the preferences we innately feel for particular activities or subjects of study. What's even more revealing is the fact that when we choose to express our uniqueness and follow our innate desires, we find the energy and perseverance to get through anything. It allows us to withstand the pain of the process, and it is this perseverance that truly leads to mastery. In our culture, we tend to equate thinking and intellectual powers with success and achievement. In many ways, however, it is an emotional quality that separates those who master a field from the many who simply work at a job. Our levels of desire, patience, persistence, and confidence end up playing a much larger role in success than sheer reasoning powers. Robert Greene calls this inner calling our life's 
task. So how do we understand what this life task is? In my experience, a person's life's task is never just one thing. I believe it's an ever-evolving organism that takes shape throughout the course of a life. We do not need to know where we end up, but rather, we simply need to practice following that inner voice, our intuition and curiosities. From there, we can watch a beautiful life of mastery unfold. Robert Greene discusses how we can look back to our childhood. For all of us, this uniqueness first expresses itself in childhood through certain primal inclinations. Such feelings can be seen as purely mystical, beyond explanation, or as hallucinations and delusions. But there is another way to see them, as eminently real, practical, and explicable. At your birth, a seed is planted. That seed is your uniqueness. It wants to grow, transform itself, and flower to its full potential. It has a natural assertive energy to it. Your life's task is to bring that seed to flower, to express your uniqueness through your work. Hearing this might scare you. You might feel completely lost. To that I say, fear not. I was in this position and still am at times. I believe the path back to yourself is not a drastic one, but a gradual and iterative one. As I've shared before, to simply follow the breadcrumbs of curiosity, step by step, you can find small moments in which you open yourself up to that inner voice. Can you choose to sit still until you are in a state of complete boredom? And when you are here, what does your mind and body pull you towards? What does your inner voice say in this moment? If you feel like you're light years away from your genuine self, you can look back to your childhood to reconnect with your inner voice. What childhood memories stick with you to this day? Could those moments point to natural talents and interests that lay dormant within you? I'll leave you with one last quote from the book to illustrate the importance of living a life of mastery. You must understand the following. In order to master a field, you must love the subject and feel a profound connection to it. Your interest must transcend the field itself and border on the religious. For Einstein, it was not physics, but a fascination with the forces that governed the universe. For Bergman, it was not film, but the sensation of creating and animating life. For Coltrane, It was not music, but giving voice to powerful emotions. Just as a well-filled day brings blessed sleep, so a well-employed life brings a blessed death. Wishing you the openness to your innate desires, to your inner voice, and towards a life of mastery. And that's it for this flow state talk break. What would you like to do next? Do you want to jump back into work with either a 30 or 60 minute session? Do you want to take a break with some ambient nature sounds? Or do you want to listen to another talk break? Choose the video that best suits your mood right now.